Hello and welcome to another episode of Relationship Alive. This is your host, Neil Satin. I'm going to start today with a little disclaimer. A disclaimer because this episode might not be the best thing to listen to if you are having challenges in your relationship or if you are desperately seeking some hope and optimism. Because even though almost every single episode that I've done for the past nearly five years has been full of hope and optimism and positive energy around relationships, today's episode is going to be a little different. Today's episode is going to be the anti-relationship episode. It's going to be the why the fuck would you want to do that to yourself episode. And part of the reason for doing this episode is because there's just no way around how I've been feeling about relationships lately, which isn't completely jaded the way that I'm talking about right now, but I've certainly had my moments of just sitting back in sheer bafflement, wondering why, why we do this. Why, when relationships, sure, can be such a source of joy in our lives, but also such a source of deep pain and potentially alienation from who we are and and in the ways that that a relationship can distance us from being our best selves for all those reasons. I mean, obviously the reason that this podcast exists is so those things don't happen. And yet here I am in moments feeling kind of jaded about relationships. And so I wanted to create a safe space to have that conversation to have the conversation that questions relationships, that questions why we do it, that questions the consequences of being in relationship. And honestly, to give myself some license here to just be a little negative. Now, I'm not going to be, th- this episode isn't just going to be me railing about relationship because. The converse of being negative about relationships is being positive about the alternatives. So it's not going to be all gloom and doom here, but I did want to give myself the permission to just be who I'm being right now. And I have my I have my good moments and I have my less than good moments. And so because I've shared so much of my own personal journey with you here on the show, I thought I'd share this part of the journey too. So that being said, if you feel like you're in a desperate place and you don't want the uh, reasons for choosing to stay in the situation that you're in to be called into question, then maybe don't listen to this episode Um, because I don't want this um, particular show to be the one that, you know, sends you off on, on a path of, you know, dissolving the relationship that you're in. Um, If you're willing to take the risk with me, then, then let's dive in together. Um, because I think it's actually going to be pretty fun to ponder all the reasons why you might not want to do relationship anymore, or at least be really, really choosy about how you do relationship, period. But before we dive in, I just want to remind you that Relationship Alive is an offering for you so that you can have the most successful relationship or just to feel like you're thriving in your life. So if you're finding the show to be helpful, please consider a donation to help ensure that this show 
can continue. Every little bit counts, and you can choose whatever feels right to you to donate. Uh, all you have to do is visit neilsatin.com slash support or text the word support to the number 33444 and follow the instructions. And uh, this week I'd like to thank David, Drew, Lydia, Anne, Valerie, Kirti, Angie, Jules, and Corey. Thank you all so much for your generous and in many cases ongoing contribution to the show, the mission, and, um, and to just keeping this all going. Um, can you believe it? it's been almost five years? I've been thinking about that, um, whether I want to do something special to celebrate the five-year anniversary of Relationship Alive. So stay tuned. It may be something simple. It may be something elaborate. Probably not, but, um, but something to honor the fact that it's been five years. And at this point, 234 episodes. This is the 234th episode of the show. And uh, I don't know about you, but I, I like numbers a lot. And so even that feels significant to me that we're on episode number 234. It has something, there's something about that that kind of satisfies me on a deep level. So why not do something a little radically different today and talk about all the things that suck about relationship? <laughs> and uh, let's see. But... Before we do, um, just a reminder also that I have a free communication guide for you to improve your relationship communication. These are my top three relationship communication secrets. They're easy to put into practice and they will help you stay safe and connected and understood and intimate no matter how challenging the topic is that you want to communicate about. So just visit neilsatin.com slash relate to pick up the free guide, or you can text the word relate to the number 33444 and follow the instructions. And uh, I do also, I did open the doors to my Secrets of Relationship Communication course, which has bite-sized videos that dive in to specific aspects of how to improve your, your uh, communication in relationship. And uh, it's, it's about three hours worth of material. Um, and it takes you on this journey of all the ways that you can improve your communication without having to fix anything about other people. This is all about how we, the things that you can do uh, to make your communication more powerful, more connected, and um, more effective for you. Um, and if you want to check out that, you can just visit neilsatin.com slash course, C-O-U-R-S-E. Um, and lastly, there's a free group on Facebook called the Relationship Alive Community. Come join us. There are over 4,000 people who are there to talk about relationship stuff and to create a, sp a safe space to do so. Uh, and if you have any questions for the show, just record yourself asking the question and send it to questions at relationshipalive.com. And um, some of those questions I will select and answer on the show. All right, let's get to the nitty gritty. Why do you want to do this relationship stuff anyway? All right, I'm going to let my most jaded self come out here. Why do we do relationship? Let's, let's just think about it candidly. Uh, we don't want to be alone. It's hard. Sometimes it's really challenging to be alone. And having someone there with you for the ups and for the downs, uh, someone to share the load when there's a lot to be done, and uh, someone to celebrate with you when there are occasions that need to be celebrated, um, someone to have physical intimacy with, to have sex and pleasure and connectedness in that way, um, someone to laugh with, someone to cry with, 
all of that someone to whatever with, that's about not being alone. Because the only difference in terms of doing any of those things with a partner and doing it by yourself is that there's someone there, someone there with you. You're not alone. So one good reason to be to choose to be in a relationship is to not be alone for any of those things, for for any and all or some of those things. Uh, what's another good reason to be in a relationship? Well, um, I guess in today's day and age, uh, life can be kind of expensive. So having two people who are able to contribute to your domestic well-being through um, making money or um, or doing the things that are that keep a household going. Um, I mean, I guess that's getting back into not being alone and sharing the burden, but you know, we're getting a little more specific there. Um, so yeah, having having help in that regard. And, and in that way, you can potentially achieve more than you could have by yourself. Um, maybe maybe twice as much. Or maybe if your um, partner is capable of earning way, way more than you are, then, then you can achieve way, way more than you could have on your own. So there's some there's some benefits there for sure, some financial benefits, um, some economic benefits, and some uh, some just domestic getting shit done benefits to having another person around. Again, the whole premise of relationship is you're is you're not alone, like we were talking about in point number one. So point number two is really an extension of that, and let's just expand that to all of the ways that that being with someone can. Um, make your life glow a little brighter can help push you to do more with your one uh, beautiful life than maybe you would have if you were by yourself because when you're when you're alone you have to find um, you have to find ways of reflecting on your journey uh, that aren't about someone else reflecting back at you And that brings me to one of the challenges of relationship. Why relationship can really suck. I mean, it can suck because none of us are perfect. And so if your partner is there looking at your imperfections, then chances are that they're going to reflect those back to you. So you're going to have all kinds of opportunity to learn about the ways that you come up short, the ways that you fail, the ways that you fail them, the ways that you fail others, the ways you fuck up, the ways you do or say stupid things, um, the viewpoints that you have that are maybe a little irrational. Or maybe your partner's super irrational and so you're supremely rational and they're going to be there all the time questioning the ways that you think about things. There are aspects of that that can really undermine who you are. Like, who is this other person to be there in your life, to be telling you what they think about who you are and what you do, right? We appoint those people by choosing them as our partner. And then somehow them being our partner gives them license so frequently to have opinions about who we are and, and, and what we do in the world. And sometimes I don't want someone else's opinion about my choices. I mean, my opinion in and of itself sometimes is all I, is all I really require because often I see the shitty things that I do and, and I, got, I got plenty of self um, judgment and flagellation to, uh, to go around. I don't need another person doing that for me. I mean, if you heard my episode uh, with David Burns, uh, it was a, a session on overwhelm. Um, it was really long, but you get to hear some of the negative thoughts that are happening in my own brain. Why would I need another person to echo those thoughts to me? Tell you what, I don't. I don't need another person to echo those things to me. It's so important to be clear about what your boundaries are with your partner. 
And so frequently we're not, we're not clear. And so, um, so intimacy becomes this open invitation um, to be to vulnerability, which can be good, but to being wounded, which can be not so good. And I'm not sure that that that's a smart choice. Like, why choose that in our lives? Why choose to have someone around who just can be like carrying the knife along with the map to our Achilles heel all the time? And the the longer that someone knows us, the more they know how to get at us and the more their judgments about us get get rooted. I mean, how challenging is it, right, to maintain curiosity, to maintain flexibility, to maintain openness about the person that you're with? It It's challenging. It's why we spend so much energy talking about it here on the show, is that it's not easy. If it were easy, you'd be doing it all the time. And the person in front of you at every moment would be new and you would be open to the experience of who that person is and they would be open to the experience of who you are. They'd forgive you for your mistakes and then they'd say like, hey, like that's cool, like let's just try again. If only, right? Like no, so often it's not like that. People don't forgive us, they hang on to every last little thing that we did and you might think that they forgave you but then you find out a year later, two years later, no, they're actually still hanging on to that thing. And in fact, it comes out uh, that they're hanging on to it at some of your most vulnerable, weak moments. So now not only are you knocked down to the ground because you could have acted in a way that was more conducive to a positive life, so not only are you knocked down to the ground, but on top of that, there's like like they add a seasoning of ways that you've failed them or failed others, failed yourself in the past. They're there to remind you of all the ways that you fucked up. And and why do we want that in our lives? I'm not really sure. And I'm especially not sure, you know, I was thinking about last week's episode. So I, I had this interview with two, honestly, of my heroes, um, Phil Donahue and Marlo Thomas, both heroes of mine for very different reasons. I didn't even know that they were married, but turns out they've been married for 40 years. That's amazing. And um, the episode is is fascinating. I think, I mean, I don't want to get too off topic here, but but I think you'll really enjoy everything that they have to offer about what they've learned and what they learned by talking to other 40 other famous couples who have been together for a long time about um, their journeys, what's, what's helped them stay together for that long. So it's a great episode and, um, and there are lots of things to be learned from people who have stayed together, who have stood the test of time. And, um, and yet I couldn't help in thinking about the episode, too, about how not only that episode, but really this entire podcast privileges the idea of being in a relationship, like that that's somehow what we ought to be aspiring to. And no, no marriage is, is 40 or 50 years of bliss, although there are there were there was at least one couple that Phil and Marlo um, interviewed who said that they never fight. And they didn't say it in a way that was like, you know, because in my first marriage, we never fought. We actually actually we had one fight at the very beginning um, of our relationship. And um, and then we never had another fight. And in fact, we got along really, really well. And and when. Um, she and I started telling people that we were going to get divorced. They were shocked because to the outside world, our relationship seemed perfect because we got along so well. We never fought. Well, the rest of that story might be for a different day. Um, but suffice to say that most people in relationship suffer on some level. You get all the joys the shared happiness, the shared sex, the creating babies, maybe, if that's part of your plan. You get all the shared happiness, but then you get lots and lots of suffering. You get the judgment, the anger, the expectations, the um, 
the stressful moments where you're trying to meet someone else's needs and and maybe succeeding or maybe failing um all the ways that someone else can undermine you all the ways that someone else's journey can distract you from your own you get all of that and it makes me start to wonder like what would your life be like if you didn't let yourself get so distracted by other people i mean when I look back at my life and all the decisions I've made over the course of my life that were about trying to preserve or improve the relationship that I was in and where I privileged that question of like, well, what does this relationship need? Where I privileged that over my own needs, my own desires, well, life, life would look pretty different if I hadn't been doing that. Now, of course, I have no idea how the fuck life would look if I hadn't been doing that. And I sure as hell know that I wouldn't have my lovely children that I have. And, you know, whenever I'm sitting there kind of cursing my fate and the, the painfulness of um, post-divorced life, as an example... Um, I, I am grateful for my kids and um, and so on that level I, I wouldn't want it any other way right I'm grateful for the mistakes that I made that were made out of love right I made like when I objectively when I look back at the choice that I made at least in my first marriage and um, and you know in my second marriage then I wonder like, okay, some of those, some of the aspects of those decisions, they were, they were a little fucked up, honestly. And, and I think that's part of why relationship is so hard is because we can only make the, the best decision that we're capable of at any given moment. And for lots of us, when we're making those choices at earlier moments in our lives, we're also dealing with all of the baggage that comes, you know, that, that's pretty fresh in our lives. Like when I was in my 20s and my 30s, um, a lot of the wounding from my family dynamic was really there close to the surface. And so a lot of the choices that I was making was in direct counterpoint to the suffering that I had either experienced or witnessed in my family or in just being a teenager and all the suffering implied in that or being in my 20s and trying to figure out what the heck I was doing with my life or or like there there are all these ways that um, that I was only as prepared as I could have been to make the decisions that I was making and so when I look back on those decisions unsurprisingly some of them are pretty bad they were made for bizarre reasons um, and uh, you know, they were like reasons such as like, um, oh, I'm going to choose to be with this person because they seem um, really calm and like everything will always be OK with that person. That seemed really good, especially because I was coming out of a relationship at the time that was super volatile, lots of yelling and anger. And so like being with someone who was the the epitome of still waters running deep um that um seemed like a really smart choice and as i mentioned yeah except for one time we we never really fought um i also found it really challenging to get to know that person and there are still things about that person that mystify me where I'm like, I just do not understand where you're coming from or why you're coming from. Or when there were um, moments that were required really, uh, from my perspective, required some deep conversation, some heartfelt vulnerability, some openness. Um, my experience of that person was that she was not wanting or able 
to show up for those kinds of conversations. So they just became contentious and, um, and it drove us further and further apart. So I think all of this is really trying to tell you that um, no matter what, unless you're super, super lucky, you're probably gonna make a bad decision about who you're with or why you're with them. And then you have to be prepared for the consequences of a really bad choice. And some of that might be you rising to the occasion and becoming skillful, which is, of course, what Relationship Alive is all about. Um, but in many, and perhaps most cases, it's just a recipe for ongoing suffering. And again, why choose that? Why choose the ongoing suffering? Why not just choose to be in a, in a relationship as long as it's good or as long as it's mostly good? You know, sure, like, I don't, I don't think you should bail at the first sign of trouble, but, you know, maybe at the third or fourth or tenth or fifty millionth sign of trouble, like, why the fuck are you doing that to yourself? Why? There's a lot of life to be lived and if it's all happening in relation to this one other person where you feel stuck and unseen and judged and miserable, like why, why? There, there's, there really is no reason. Like you can try and try and maybe improve the situation and if you do, great, that's awesome. Like I said, I'm, I'm giving myself permission to be a little jaded here. But if you can't, then who cares? Like, there are better choices to be, made, to be made because whether it's choosing to just like enjoy a different person's company for a little while or choosing to just enjoy your own company, um, that could be a much more powerful, positive, edifying choice for you. Now, some people actually want to live as alone as possible. And they find ways to do that. They move out to the woods, they f hunt and forage, and they literally rely on no other people. It's challenging to envision a life like that for myself. And, and I think it is also, like even if you made it your goal to literally not rely on anyone, to not have a single other relationship, um, it would be super challenging to, to do that, to really pull that off because we live on a planet we're just all interconnected with each other. And no matter what, even if you're living alone in the woods, the actions that other people are taking out in the world, they're, they're impacting you. Um, that being said, there's a whole realm of possibility in between living alone like a hermit in the woods and and being uh, wrapped up in relationship with another, a lifelong partnership, you know, come hell or high water with another person, um, there's, there's a huge realm of possibility in between there. And sometimes I wonder if a healthy relatedness is actually not about trying to preserve a long-term relationship at all costs, but instead is about trying to improve your relational ability, your, your ability to be in relationship with other people. Um, but part of being in relationship with others is being boundaried. And part of being boundaried is understanding when you are um, being negatively impacted and doing something about it. Like, I, I don't think that it makes sense to, to just stick around when um, things are just getting worse and worse. And in fact, I think in those cases, like, it could even be the best thing for your relationship with that person to take a huge amount of space to get some perspective. Now, I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about that, but before I do, uh, I just need to take a quick break so I can mention this week's sponsor. So if you're looking for some extra support, perhaps this episode is traumatizing you. <laughs> I hope not. I hope you're just 
kind of here on the ride with me. Um, but if you are looking for extra support around things that are getting in the way of uh, what's of your happiness or achieving your goals, one great way that you can do that from the comfort of your own home or office or anywhere that you have some level of connectivity is BetterHelp. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can chat via text with your counselor at any time, and you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions all without having to go anywhere. It's more affordable than traditional offline counseling and financial aid is available. They also offer a broad range of expertise so that you can find the person most suited to helping you with your own unique situation. In fact, so many people are using BetterHelp that they're recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. So whether it's depression, stress, anxiety, your relationship, trauma, anger, family conflicts, whatever is up for you, try out BetterHelp to help you move past the places where you're stuck. So to start living a happier life today, you can try BetterHelp and get an extra 10% off your first month for being a Relationship Alive listener. Just visit betterhelp.com slash alive and join over 1 million people taking charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash alive. And thank you, BetterHelp, for your support of Relationship Alive, our mission, and for supporting our listeners. Um, because every little bit of support definitely counts. So speaking of better help and, and getting help from another person, like a, a therapist or a coach, um, let's talk about that for a minute. Because getting help uh, is part of, is, is being in relationship. You're being in relationship with another person, which is um, how you are, um, you know, you're going to be in dialogue. They're going to be listening to you. They're going to be supporting you. They're going to be giving you suggestions maybe for how to, how to adjust what you're doing. But the, the purpose of a therapist or when I'm coaching someone, my purpose is no matter what to be an advocate for that person. And, you know, sometimes that calls for tough love, but even tough love, you got to do skillfully. You got to do it in a way that doesn't undermine the other person. It's not coming from a place of anger. So contrast that with what happens in relationships so much of the time where someone feels like they know you so well that they can dish out the tough love, the truth that you need to hear. But rarely does that come out in a way that's loving, that actually elevates you. So much of the time that tough love comes out in a moment of anger or anguish or you know, where it's, it maybe is true, but it's truth that comes with a price, a price that, um, that cuts you down or that undermines the, the love and connectedness that the, that the two of you are feeling. Now, if you're practicing all of the principles that we talk about here on Relationship Alive or that I cover in my communication course, hopefully that isn't happening. And in fact, Tough love is something that I honestly think is rarely, 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 rarely called for. But the beauty of having a coach or a therapist is that they are there exclusively for you. And so you don't have to worry about being a burden to that person. You don't have to hold back your truth. In fact, a good coach or therapist is encouraging your truth, encouraging you to really say what your experience is. You don't have to hide it because you're afraid of hurting their feelings. You don't have to hide it because you're afraid of undermining the, the fabric of something that hopefully is gonna last for you know the next 100 years, right? You don't have to do that. Because actually, if you decide you really hate your therapist or coach, you can get a new one just like that. 
You say, thank you so much for all the ways that you've helped me. And I think that this relationship has served its purpose and I'm, I'm going to move on and maybe just kind of do things on my own for a while or maybe find someone who specializes in this particular thing that I'm struggling with. I've had a number of amazing therapists and coaches over the years who have supported me in very unique ways and sometimes that can continue for a long period of time and sometimes it just kind of reaches its limit and you're like okay I think I think we're done here and that's okay that's okay um, when you're in relationship under the premise of like this relationship is gonna go as long as it possibly can we are going to wring every last ounce of love and energy of this connection and hopefully there's enough in there to last us for the rest of our lives then <laughs> it's a much different story right especially when you start to realize that there might not be quite enough and that for whatever reason your partnership isn't regenerating that loving energy that it needs because the reality is love isn't finite like you don't you don't wring out a sponge and then you're done as long as you're adding more liquid to the sponge you know you can soak up more and and then you got more to squeeze um now okay some some may say that you can maybe tap into your connection with divine love or God or spirit or your heart energy and that th that within you you have this infinite source of love that's probably true on some level I mean I find it to be true for myself but wait a minute this is the jaded episode so fuck that fuck that there's there's there are times when we feel depleted and when we just don't want to show up that way and during those times we got to figure that shit out. But if you're just depending on this one other person who may or may not be there for you, then that could be a lost cause. Whereas someone who's willing to show up as your therapist or your coach, or, um, or I don't know if you do like co-counseling, some people do that. But when you're willing to show up in that way with another person or they're willing to show up in that way for you, then you can get the support that you need to like figure out what's going on in your life or to replenish that love energy by feeling loved by another person. And then you have then you'll have more to give or you'll have the puzzle that you're facing in your life figured out. But you're not having to do it always in counterpoint to this other person and they're taking care of them, taking care of their feelings. Now, that doesn't mean that if you have like a counselor or a coach or a, a good friend that, that you have license to abuse them, <laughs> right? But for one thing, the, in, in most of those cases, maybe not so much in the friend case, but in the the working with a professional case you'll probably have a lot less there that's undermining your um, your connection that's undermining your intimacy you're gonna have much more of a history of more or less unidirectional support of you and that's good that's that's solid that's a lot to build on when you sometimes with your friends things can get complicated and um, you know, that's why I think sometimes it's helpful to be really judicious about how you lean on your friends um, because uh, you can overdo it um, because your friends are your friends and not your not your spouse. Now, isn't that funny, right? Because with your spouse, like you're tied to this person or you're even if they're even if you're not married, like if you're in that that monogamous like who knows when this will end but let's try to keep this going as long as we can commitment with another person if you're in that then you're tied to them and for a lot of people that seems to translate into them having license to treat you in some pretty shitty ways 
not universally. I mean, if it was if someone treated you poorly all the time, you probably wouldn't stick around. I mean, that's not true a hundred percent of the time. But I'd say that even in the in abusive situations, the reason one of the reasons, not the reason, but one of the reasons why people stay is because there's hope. There are moments of goodness. There are moments that that can fool you into thinking like, no, this is this is going to be okay. It's not going to be as bad as all that. Now, hopefully you are not in an abusive situation. Hopefully, this is going to sound kind of funny. Hopefully you're in a situation that, that has a reasonable amount of suffering, but nothing totally intolerable. Um, but even so, even so, right? There, there you are. You're tied to that person. And a lot of energy can go in to trying to figure out all the problems that come up with being tied to another person. It takes a lot of energy. And so as the relationship that you're in starts to require more and more of that energy, then there's less and less energy available for all those things that we talked about at the top of the show, um, all those things that were like the positive reasons for being in relationship. Those things start to get smaller and smaller the more energy that the struggle requires. And so sometimes I do wonder if the, the longevity and success and thriving of a relationship is primarily due to just sort of a random bell curve. If it's just statistics, like every so often, you know, some people meet who are just lucky enough where they mostly almost all the time get along, where they have conflicts, but it's relatively easy to resolve them, where they have like the special sauce that it takes to just kind of keep doing it and to feel really good about it. And and it could be true that what they do, um, that their habits of relating do offer us uh, other mere mortals ways of trying to improve, trying to improve how we approach relationship. If we just do it like they do it, then that will improve our chances of succeeding. And that's true, okay? Like, I'm just being real with you, like I see that happen I do see that happen a lot, you know, with with clients, with um, people who have taken the courses, with people who are making adjustments. I mean, even with people who listen to the podcast, right, and write me and, and say like, oh my God, this one episode on XYZ, like that changed everything. So sometimes, you know, getting a, a helpful hint, getting a new perspective, sometimes that really can do the trick. So I don't knock those people and I appreciate them because those uh, special sauce secrets of having a, uh, a long-term successful relationship, like we need those. And some of those things might not work for you because they're part of the special sauce that those people have. And, and they may even find that if they did those exact same things, but with different people, that it wouldn't work out so well. Because if you're looking at the bell curve, then there's a, a much larger number of us who are going to not meet the person who's like ideally suited for us and instead is going to have a certain degree of of ups and downs in relationship there'll be some of that wow this is amazing especially at the beginning and then that amazingness will taper off into reality and then if you don't have that special uh, special sauce, then you either put in the work and manage to actually make it awesome, or you put in the work and it still sucks, or you don't put in the work and it just deteriorates and you're stuck until you get frustrated enough um, to do something about it, or unt until the other person dies and then then you're saved. And I don't know about you, but I've I've been in relationships where I've been just that miserable. Not that I wanted the other person to die like for them. Like I didn't I didn't want them to like actually die and I didn't, you know, that would be sad. But at the same time, like 
sometimes the thought of the other person die, dying does just make things a lot easier. It's like, oh yeah, if they could just die, then uh, then I could get on with my life and not not worry about all the consequences of breaking up because, you know, let's face it, there are lots of consequences in our world for breaking up. There are consequences within us that are going to happen no matter what. I'm I'm still seeing that happen, you know, and it's almost it's almost a year at this point since I got divorced. And yeah, I still feel like the pain of like all the ways, all the untanglings of my heartstrings. And um, so there's a certain amount of trauma from breaking up that's just kind of unavoidable. But then there are all the ways that society like doesn't know how to hold that or um, privileges staying together over breaking up or assumes that it's a tragedy versus something to be celebrated. Um, yeah, it's it can be challenging to, to take that path, even though for many, if not maybe most of us, it's actually the same thing to do. The same thing to do is to look at a relationship that's not going so well and to be like, you know what, let's cut our losses before we're just miserable. Like, let's let's just get out of here. And, and maybe we'll be able to work on a way of relating that actually works for us, that, that limits the expectations that we have e of each other in a way that helps us succeed. Because choosing not to be in like some unterminable, unterminating, I don't know how you'd put that, but some long lasting monogamous relationship, um, that choosing not to do that doesn't mean that you're not going to be related with people in fact you may still choose like oh i'm gonna i'm gonna be in relationship with this person and and it could last the next year it could last the next five years the next 10 years we might have children together but in the end if we're making each other miserable then i'm okay letting that go and here is perhaps one of the most important reasons for choosing not to be in relationship. It's because, and of course, I hope you're with me. I mean, if you're listening to me, you're with me. Um, but I, I'm recognizing we're 47 minutes into the show now. But here it is. Like, I saved the most important thing for the very end. The most important reason to not be in a relationship is... I can't believe I'm saying this, but it's to figure yourself out. It's to really get to know yourself, to get to trust yourself, to feel like you are a capable human being in and of yourself in the world. Now, this doesn't mean that you don't have friends or lovers or relationships or family or any of that. Like you, you could still be related to other people. Again, you don't have to be a hermit. But getting things figured out for yourself in life, knowing that you can take care of yourself so that you're not relying on someone else to take care of you, knowing that you can solve problems for yourself so that you're not relying on someone else to fix all your problems for you, Knowing that you can love yourself so that you're not relying on someone else to show you what it's like to feel loved. Knowing that you can give love to others. You actually don't need a partner for that. You can walk down the street and you can shine love on every single person you see. Trust me, it's amazing. I've done that. And, you know, apart from the people who get creeped out by it, it's it's fascinating. Um, it's a little weird now with everyone, you know, wearing masks and being paranoid about coronavirus. Um, it's a little more challenging to shine your love on people. But, you know, I do it from behind my mask, you know. And um, there's there's so many things that you can learn about how to how to um, when you have a big question in your life. Well, how do you how do you solve that question? without necessarily finding this other person who you have to rely on all the time. I mean, in that interview with Marlo Thomas and Phil Donahue, one thing Marlo Thomas said was, you know, we've been married for 40 years, but we didn't get married until we were in our 40s. So these are two people who did spend a lot of time figuring out their own shit. 
And they probably still had a lot to figure out. In fact, I know that they had a lot to figure out together, um, even so. And there, there's kind of an unavoidable part of that. Like when, no matter what, you can only figure out so much on your own. And then when you get into a relationship, it's going to uncover new things that are, um, that are challenging. And it's going to require a certain amount of resourcefulness and, you know, all 233 other episodes of Relationship Alive to be able to do that well. But let's let this episode just be the strong stand for, hey, it is okay to be alone. It is okay to just want to be by yourself and to be okay with that, to take care of yourself to be in choice around the other people that you take care of, whether it be friends or family or your kids or, and to find people to take care of you in ways that are nourishing, but not necessarily um, even roping the other person into a lifetime of having to take care of you, right? There's lots of love out there. So I don't know, how'd I do? How'd I do? Did I make a, did I make a pretty strong case for not being in relationship? It felt like I kept coming back to reasons why relationship can be good. Um, So I don't know, maybe I'll have to do a take two of this, uh, this episode at some point. Um, But I don't know, In in a lot of ways, I feel like this, this all makes a lot of sense that while there are good reasons to be in relationship and enjoy relationship, there are lots of good reasons to just not be in relationship and to take all that energy that might go towards the struggle of relationship if you are struggling and struggling and struggling and to put that energy towards teaching yourself how to cook really tasty food or learning how to Um, go backpacking in the wilderness or um, getting fit or learning how to play a musical instrument or or there are so many amazing ways to just enjoy being alive that are available for you if you're willing to create the space and time and 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 to devote the energy to those explorations Um, you know So don't let relationship be something that sucks the life out of you and that keeps you from really getting to know who you are and what you're capable of. Or the thing that steers you in a particular direction that may not be the direction you want to go. It's because only you can can know that for yourself. And I want you to feel confident being honest with yourself about it. So I I actually could probably talk about this more. So there probably will be a part two at some point. And in fact, we've touched on some topics that I think are going to require a little bit more time and energy. For instance, um, this question about um, time limited relationships versus um, indefinite relationships. Um, I think there's a lot there. Because ultimately, I think that for the, with the exception of the special sauce couples, my feeling is that there are special sauce couples, there are couples who are going to learn skills of relatedness and may not start out as special sauce couples, but who will find their way to that place. And then there are a lot of couples who maybe just would be better off choosing to go their separate ways. And there shouldn't be anything wrong with that. And in fact, there are, if we take off the stigma and take off the ways that we find there to be problems with that, then there is probably a lot of energy and resourcefulness available to make those kinds of changes really positive for everyone. So that that's, you know, for another episode. In the meantime, I'm very curious to know how this episode sits with you, what it stirred up, what questions you have, what answers you have. Um, You can email me. My email address is neilius, N-E-I-L-I-U-S, 
at neilsatin.com. Uh, or you can uh, post something in the Facebook Relationship Alive community. And if you want to make sure that I see it, make sure you tag me because um, I can't always monitor all the posts that are happening there. Um, yeah, let me know. Let me know what you think. Do relationships suck? Is it better to just be alone and to be really selective about how we spend time with other people? Can relationships just be a huge waste of energy? where we'd be so much better off just like not doing it. What do you think? I want to know. Um, in the meantime, take care and I will see you next week with another episode that's probably going to be a more positive episode than this one. <laughs> but this was positive, right? It was just positive about something kind of different than what we tend to talk about. But I think it... It was time today to um, to just explore, and I appreciate your taking the journey with me because I feel a lot better for having uh, taken the time to talk about it. All right, until next week, take care. <laughs>